Hello, good morning. Thanks so much for coming and joining me here in my shop. Today is July 25th, and it's a lovely day outside again today. And this time it's going to be cool. It's going to be around 22 or 23 degrees out and sunny most of the day. That's fantastic. Great. What am I doing in here? What I'm doing in here is I'm going to make some voltage measurements of uh, important voltages on all the tubes. Uh, a lot of what the radio is about, or any electronic device is about, is setting up operating conditions for active devices like tubes or transistors. So the way it's done with tubes is with fairly high voltages, a couple hundred volts on certain uh, elements. And those voltages are fairly um, constrained, I guess. they got to be the right amount to produce the right uh, action in the tube. And uh, now there, there's a range of operating, of uh, beneficial operating conditions for each tube. The uh, tube manual, you see me wave around here once in a while. This guy here uh, gives kind of uh, operating uh, conditions for tubes, but engineers are free to vary from those uh, a little bit anyway, 20, 30% up or down. Um, so what that means is every radio is just a little bit different. Now this radio uh, in the uh, service information has information about what voltages should appear on the pins of all these tubes. So we're going to avail ourselves of that information and uh, utilize it in making measurements to verify that these important voltages are correct. Now it's really only one or two voltages per tube, the plate voltage and the screen voltage that are really worth measuring and, uh, and considering. And I guess maybe the output of the power supply, the, the power supply voltage is worth making a note of. So let's take a look at this diagram, see what we can get out of it. So here, here's one page of the service manual. The, this page is for two different radios. You see down here, model 1182X, that's this part and the one I've got here, this, this. Um, you know, I should have had this chart uh, out with me for <laughs> I've been working on this radio because it's very helpful. Let's just take a look at it here. So what this chart is showing is, uh, you can see all these voltages written here, 15 volts, 300 volts, 250 volts, and then you see a line coming down to something. This is not a tube, this is the filter capacitor. And you see the other end of the line going out here to the edge of the diagram. Just a wee bit odd that they've done it like this, but this is how they've done it. This means you're reading the voltage from this point to the chassis of the radio. And there's just a few voltages here. Maybe just this one. Just this one that is measured between two pins. And this is the output of the main power supply uh, transformer, the big transformer in the radio, 760 volts AC sitting between pins 2 and pins 4. You would not want to touch that, that's for sure. So we can check that too. So I'll be studying this diagram. I printed out a version of it. I think it's going to be too small to read, but pictorially it might be helpful. You see how in, in each tube they show the tube key. That's this part sticking out here. See the key here is on a different angle. Uh, that's helpful. I wish I wish I realized that was on this diagram earlier on, but that's okay. Um, and also, I, mean, I, I didn't finish that thought. The uh, pins are numbered here, and they're numbered pictorially correct. So you can look in the radio and you can see this. Now, I assume we're looking into the underside of the radio. That's where all the Test will be done, so that's what this has to be. Pretty sure of that. Okay, I'm going to stop, get my printed version, drink a little bit of coffee, turn on the voltmeter, and we're going to go at it here. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll do the first tube. Uh, I'm going to start with a rectifier tube down here, in fact. So you can kind of see the process. Then off camera, I will go through all these tubes because this is painful to do on a camera. And any anomalies, I will mark down, and then we can look into them. I don't expect any, but you know, who knows, right? So I'm going to put this on. 
We're going for pretty high voltages here on the rectifier. I'm going to stay away from the output of the transformer, which is an AC voltage. And I have to wear these things just to read this diagram here. So we're looking for 300 volts on pin 7. Without the radio on, I'm just going to, it's just a little too dark. Let's get it like that. And go pin 7, right there. Right there. It's actually coming out on here. Probably probably because they have a way of when you pull this out, you break the uh, B plus circuit right at the tube. So there's no B plus anywhere in the radio. Something like that's going on, I think. That's that's a common thing to have a little jumper associated with this. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, let's get it going. Volume down, broadcast band. On. Power really on. Okay, so we're set DC 500 volts here. We're looking for 300 volts. It should come up to about there on the meter. We've got to do this with full voltage applied. Okay, we can take a look now. Make sure this is on DC. So it's two, this is a fairly accurate meter, 275, not quite 300. So we're feeding the radio with 113 volts. Let me just crank it up a bit here to the proper line voltage, 117. Okay, now we're right on 300, 300 volts right on the money. Excellent. That was so easy, I'm going to do another tube. That was too easy. So we'll just continue on upwards. Next tube is uh, uh, oh, 240 volts, 250 volts, just, and 15 volts are the three voltages I should find. The uh, 250 and 240. So let's go for the 240 on pin 3, 250 on pin 4. One, two, three. So that's 240 there. And then the next pin over, 250. Okay, so the uh, important thing there is that one is uh, a little bit less than the other. I want the screen voltage normally. A little less than the other. And then the 15, 15, 15 is on pin eight. 15 volts, pin 8. Get the right tube, the right pin. There we are. 15 volt scale there. You can see we're just over 15. Just, we're about uh, 17. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, I never checked it. Make sure the radio's working. <laughs> Turn it up for a minute. Very good. Those interesting pops just went by there. Uh, hey, let's just go on. This is going so well, I think I'll just carry on here. Number three, third tube rather. We're looking for 240, 250 again. Same pin locations. It's exactly the same, 15 volts. Oh, these are the two output tubes I'm doing. Okay, that explains why they're the same. So, so, so we should see, it's supposed to be 240, 230. We'll probably see 250, 240. Pin 3. Pin 3. 1, 2, 3. Here's 3. Oh. Okay, here we go again. Pin 3. So we're 250. And then... I'll see those. Just 250, uh, maybe maybe two, almost 260, and just below 250. Okay, so again. Oh, and then 15 on the uh, on three, wasn't it on three? 15 on. No, it was pin eight, wasn't it? Pin eight. It's pin eight. 
pin 8, we should see 15 here. Okay. 15, exactly the same as the other two. Perfect. Perfect. 15 is the bias of the output tubes. Well, let's just keep going. I'm just ripping right along here. Okay, now in this case, the next tube, fourth tube up, we're looking at, looking at something I can't read. I'd say 85 volts on pin 6. I think it says 85 volts on pin 6. Pin 6 is right here. 150 volt scale over there. 150 volt scale, we're at 80, 89 volts. That's fine. That's just fine. It's only one voltage on that tube worth looking at, I think. It would look that way. Next tube. A lot of these tubes will only have a plate voltage on them that's worth checking. So that's what we're looking for. 245 on pin 8. There should be another voltage on this one. And 95 on pin 6. Okay, so we'll go pin 8, 245. Pin 8, 245 up here. Pin 8. Oh, 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 what is that? What is that that does that? I don't like it. Don't know what that is. Pin 8. Okay, now it's getting difficult to, uh, pin 6. No, pin 8 and pin 6 is why, so I'm getting confused. Pin 8, 245, should be, sure of things. The key is hidden behind my yellow my yellow capacitor. So the key is pointing straight down, is that right? Not quite straight down. There it is. I can feel it. I can't see it. So okay, so now we're looking for in It's really hard to get to. It's kind of. Oh, I don't know if I can get at it. Holy smokes! There's that crashing sound. Here's to be. Is it this? Put the meter right over. Okay, five. I was on the 150 scale. On the 500 scale, 245 is going to be right in the middle. 245. Whoa, 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 whoa. 250 on the meter. Perfect. Perfect. More of that scratchy sound. So that can be the sound of, of a tube heating up and the pins moving in the socket. If that were the case, I should be able to find it pretty easy. A little hot. There's one more tube up there. I can't get at it. Nope. So if, if I bang the radio and the, the speaker crackles, then it's a loose connection of some sort. If I bang it and it doesn't seem to have any effect on the radio, then it's probably a component failure. It could be everything from a resistor to a tube. A tube could be making this sound quite easily. It could be an internal partial short in the tube doing that. So uh, hopefully we don't, we don't have to wait till the smoke shows up again. <laughs> That's, that was how I did it last time. Here we go. Next tube, right up the top here. Band switch? Oh, 
Was that enough to stop it? I don't think so. Oh, maybe. Could be the fan switch. Give it one shot at cleaning. Okay, let's see what happens there. You think banging it would trigger the band switch, but maybe not. Okay, so we're looking for 245. say get back on this in this case plate is right there 245 500 volt scale straight up is it really going now here we go 245 straight up last two last two just two voltages on it Hurry, the radio's blowing up. Hurry, Jim. 250 on the plate. Pin 8. Looks like 95. 250 and 95. Two, 250. There's the 250. And then 95. 95. 150 volt scale. That's 110. Uh, as opposed to 95. I don't think we're going to worry about. Is there any voltage on the mystery wire? thing going out. Okay, let's go hunting for it. It's good. It's good. Come on. <laughs> really? You're going to do that? I just wiggled this ever so slightly. What, 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 what could be related to that? It's all gone now. That's often the case, you know, with these noises. They sort of build up to a crescendo and then whatever it is, locks in. Radio's still working. Lovely. Okay, so we've gone through the main tube voltages. We haven't found anything at all out of source, which is fantastic. Uh, this means that uh, unless a tube itself is weak, the tube, tubes in the radio are all doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now I do remember when I tested them I found uh, two so weak they had to be replaced and then there were two more that were also weak which I left in there. Um, I, I, I would still be hesitant to trying to draw a conclusion that the problem with the weakness is only weakness in one band so how, how can a tube affect one band? Um, not very likely. Let me shut it off here before I forget. Uh, the next step now is to do an alignment. Uh, that's, a, that's an involved process. Um, alignment assessment. I've done that a little bit by uh, firing in set uh, RF frequencies from the signal generator and then seeing where the pointer's ending up. And it's never ending up in quite the right place. Uh, so that, that's a bit of an alignment issue. Uh, and and an alarm is going off in my house, so I must go check something. Time has come to check something. A good time to have a coffee break, too. So uh, during my uh, coffee breaks, I've been watching a video, uh, Lex Fridman video. He's a guy who interviews uh, 
intelligent people with important things to say. And he's interviewing a guy named Martin Rees. Martin Rees is a pretty old guy, a scientist, a British scientist, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think he's Sir Martin Rees. And uh, this guy, who is among the smartest people in the world when it comes to physics and stuff like that, uh, he made this statement. He said, if you got a chimpanzee and you try to explain to a chimpanzee how an airplane flies, you probably wouldn't get very far. And you'd end up saying, well, it's impossible to teach a chimpanzee how an airplane flies because he's just lacking all the brain power necessary. I can't even talk to this guy. I can't even communicate anything about this. It's just hopeless for a chimpanzee to ever understand how an airplane flies. And then Reese made this point. In the same way, it's probably impossible for a human being to understand the universe. I almost fell off my chair when he said that. Yes, we spend our lives banging our head against the wall trying to figure out truth and all that kind of stuff. At least I'm doing that. And here's a guy, you know, 100,000 100, miles ahead of me on this kind of stuff saying, it's hopeless. <laughs> Yes, the human condition. Hopeless, but it must go forward. So, what am I going to do here today? Um, I could do the first, maybe the first stage of the IF, uh, of the alignment, which is the IF, uh, IF transformer alignment. Um, let me think about that a little bit before I do it, because maybe I'd be better off outside today. Hmm. Okay, well, it took me a little while to find the uh, instructions. Uh, down here it mentioned something about follow the stuff in the table. I can't find any table anywhere on the internet or anything, but looking a little closer, enough information is on this diagram here to figure out the alignment steps and carry it out. But first, we should read the realignment details here because this is a chance for the engineers to speak directly to people like me or others who might be attempting this. Here we go, realigning details. Perform alignment in proper order as shown by the accompanying chart. See, there is no chart, unless, unless they think this is a chart. Starting with number one and following all the operations across, then doing number two, etc. The chassis bottom shield must be act securely in place when making RF adjustments. Well, that's not what I'm talking about doing right now. I'm thinking about doing the IF adjustments, which could be done without the bottom plate on. Adjustment locations and frequencies are shown on a sticker fastened to the bottom of the chassis shield. Yeah, well, there is a... Uh, yeah, well, I don't see the sticker on here. Although there is a schematic, which I really haven't. It's the same schematic. Glue to the bottom of the uh, of the uh, bottom plate. Uh, da, da, da. Connect the low output of the terminal of the test oscillator to the receiver chassis for all the alignment operations. Regulate the output of the test oscillator so minimum signals apply to obtain an observable output. So keep the input signal as low as you possibly can. This will avoid AVC action. So if you let the uh, AVC operate in the radio by supplying a stronger signal, then that makes the alignment, sharp alignment difficult. It doesn't make it impossible, it makes it more difficult. The term dummy antenna. This is great because I hate this term, dummy antenna. It is thrown around so loosely. The term dummy antenna really means the device which must be connected between the high test oscillator output terminal and the point of connection to the receiver in order to obtain an ideal alignment. So the dummy antenna, um, well, I guess we'll find out what, they don't say what it is here, but there is a standard dummy antenna. I've, I've, uh, and I should really call it an interfacial circuit between your test equipment and the radio instead of this term dummy antenna, which is misleading. It's very misleading. Uh, what else does it say here? Um, about no signal, comma, 1700 kilocycles means the receiver should be tuned to approximately 1700 kilocycles where there's no signal or interference from a station 
or the receiver heterodyne oscillator or the receiver oscillator of a station or the receiver well how does the receiver's oscillator I don't know the term rock through indicates the receiver station selector should be rocked back and forth that's a tuning knob back and forth while making the indicated adjustment the adjustment and rocking should be and we don't know what it should be because uh, I cannot find any I cannot find where this is continued I cannot find the chart so this is the guy I'd have to depend on for figuring out the alignment procedure you see how they have little numbers here seven four five seven again oh three oh they have seven again five six seven again oh four and four oh <laughs> uh, okay well I think we still would try to follow this we would do maybe it doesn't matter which one of these two you do first so they're both fours in order so you do number one first no, number one's got to be doing these yeah there we are number one one and two it's actually this is what I want to do I want to do the adjustment in the IF transformers in these cans and the adjustments made from the top and the bottom underneath so here they're pointing to one of the adjustments I'll show you that in a, in a second what it actually is this is what I really want to adjust now to adjust this you don't feed a signal into the antenna you feed a signal in halfway through the radio actually much earlier than halfway you feed it into the grid of this tube and I, what I feed in I would feed in the IF frequency of 460 in this case that radio is designed for a 460 IF frequency so I put in 460 kilohertz into the grid of this tube and then it comes through the radio gets amplified comes out the speaker as a tone and the tone volume is what we measure as you make adjustments so the louder the radio the higher the indication the better the alignment basically that's the theory what's this here dummy antennas 0.1 microfarad condenser for operations one and two and they're talking about operations one and two are, are just what I'm thinking of doing so we'd use a pretty big capacitor to feed a uh, signal from the signal generator into the grid of this tube 0.1 that's a large capacitor we're using 20 picofarad for 3 and 4 and then we're using 20 picofarad resistor for what? 20 picofarad resistor for operation okay so this is probably kind of trying to refer to this a standard antenna interfacial circuit <laughs> trying to pick my words carefully which I have I have one I made up for another radio a long time ago so you can use it Hey, what's this say? Alignment procedures perform operation in numerical order. Oh, this is the other radio. Probably has the same note up here. Yeah, alignment procedure perform operation in numerical order as indicated in brackets apply oscillator input to antenna terminal. Um, uh, to the antenna terminal. N n not to the grid of this tube. Too. Well, that's what it says. Now, different radios get aligned in different ways, but they all, in the in the bigger view, they all amount to the same thing. You can feed that signal I mentioned, the 460 kilohertz, into here. I think what they're saying is just feed it into the antenna; it'll make its way to here, and it's just as good. Um, I guess that's how you have to interpret that. Connect a oscillograph high terminal to shielded lead terminal on volume control so if you want to use a oscilloscope and a sweep generator which is another way of doing the alignment you would uh, make this connection for your scope you just have to make a decision here about connecting to the grid here it doesn't say anywhere connect to the grid this tube just says stick around the antenna then it does talk about a dummy 
antenna. You'd think that would be on the antenna terminals, but we know this term is thrown around so wildly. Well, 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 we'll try with the antenna and see if that works. Uh, good. Let's check it out. At the very least, I can do a sensitivity check and see if the uh, IF is aligned correctly or, 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 or can be improved. Yeah, that's a better way of putting it. Okay, back to the radio. So the, the transformers I'm talking about are hidden from view inside these cans. And the cans are preventing the coils from emitting signals and from picking up signals, especially to each other. So that's the purpose of the cans. Same idea when you put the metal bottom on here, then nothing gets in, nothing gets out. The metal bottom itself can have an influence on some of these coils that are in here, which is why they're saying when you go to do later alignment steps, you must have the bottom on and it must be on securely. You have to have screwed it into place. Or you're going to end up aligning the radio, put the bottom on and the alignment won't be effective anymore. Okay, so we want to check the IF. I'm going to leave the radio up on its side because you see we have the adjustment here. Up at the top here. This piece here. You turn this and it drives a slug up and down in here. There's another one of these down underneath here. A little hard to see in the dark. And it's moving another slug up and down the lower part of the coil. So there's, it's a transformer, there's two coils in here. So one slug for one coil, another slug for the other coil. One is a primary, one is a secondary, it's a little hard to figure that out. Well, yeah, it's hard to figure out if it's this or if it's a lower one. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. No, no, not really. So what I need to do is I need to get my signal generator going here to uh, 460, as we read, and feed the signal. Here's the output here. Yeah. Frequency counter settle down. We're going to try feeding the output right into the antenna as it suggested. Clipping on here. Uh, in my case I maintain a protective capacitor in this little box. So I can never accidentally you know, stick 300 volts into this radio, into the uh, signal generator from the radio by accident. While we're waiting here, let's calibrate. So I want this meter to be full scale. This has to be up full. This has to be on CW or something like that. We turn this. We set it like that, right on there. Here. Now the meter is a modulation meter. We want the modulation around 30%. Stick it here. 30%, 400 hertz, we can go 1,000 hertz actually. And what this means now is, here's a multiplier, it's receiving 10 microvolts. I guess we could look at it that way. And by turning this control, I'd like to be turn it here to times one, there should be 10 microvolts coming out of here with this calibrated. Is it still calibrated? Yeah. There's some problems with, with knowing the voltage uh, that reaches the radio. But this will certainly give us, uh, you know, at least an order of magnitude understanding of what kind of signal we're sending to the radio. Still waiting for my counter to stop acting up. I need to warm up the radio and let it warm up fairly good to do this. So I'm going to switch it on. Are we ready? Sure, we're ready enough. Switch it on. Get it going. Should take about one coffee break's worth of time to warm up this radio completely. There it comes. Okay, my signal generator has stopped. You see, we're way far away from. Okay, so 240 is now here. So when this says uh, 460, we should hear something come out of this radio.
compare that at 436. That's not very good. Let's, let's, give, it a, let's give it a little more juice here. So I just raised the signal strength by a factor of 10. That's a strong, strong signal on the antenna. So this is where it should be. You should hear a tone here at 460. But instead, oh, come on, yeah, way down here, 440. Well, the alignment is way off on the radio. What that will do, uh, if you have both transformers aligned to the same incorrect, incorrect uh, frequency, like for instance, if they're all aligned to 450, let's say, maybe or 440, let's say the, the two of them are aligned to 440, the radio will work the dial will be off. So, and the radio will not perform quite as well as it could if the IF were correct. Um, so, so that's the name of the game there. That's why the radio worked a little bit, but never performed very well. Could simply be, be simply be because of this. Now, we gotta let the radio warm up and stabilize for a bit. So it's, it's coffee break time once again. Okay, I think we're ready to go here. Um, now, it didn't say it in the instructions, but probably what the uh, uh, engineers expect people to do, like me, doing an alignment, is hook up a voltmeter to the speaker and measure the speaker volume on a voltmeter. Um, you shouldn't just rely on your ear. And I could do that, but the problem then is we have to listen. You have to, you have to listen to this radio and the tone it's going to generate from the signal generator, which is thoroughly annoying to me. Uh, so, you know, being the kind of guy who doesn't follow all the rules all the time, I'm going to use my voltmeter and I have it connected to the AVC voltage. Now, if I explain the AVC voltage, automatic volume control, uh, maybe I'll just take a moment and do that before we start relying on it. That's what this meter is showing right now, is the AVC voltage. It's a negative voltage, it's a very low. This is 15 volts, it's very low right now because the radio is tuned to nothing. I'll just show you what happens. Swing the signal generator through the... So where'd that voltage come from? The voltage comes from the detector circuit in the radio. So after the uh, um, signal has come out of the transformers I'm about to adjust, it's then uh, put through a diode and it's rectified and you rectify an AC voltage, you get a DC result. The radio is designed so the rectification results in a negative voltage, because otherwise where are you gonna get a negative voltage from in a radio like this? That there are ways, but this is, there are ways, but this is very handy. So the stronger the signal, the bigger the negative voltage, the bigger the negative voltage, the bigger the negative voltage, the stronger the signal they feed. They then take that negative voltage and use it on the grids of the early tubes, like this one up here, and the one you can't see, you can't even see my hand, the first few tubes in the radio. And what that does, it varies the grid voltage. The stronger the signal, the lower the grid voltage, or the more negative, I should call it, the more negative the grid voltage, the less the tube amplifies. And these tubes are designed to do this. These are special tubes designed to have this effect. So, uh, Stronger signal, more bias, more more bias, tubes get weaker. It's a governing sort of system. You can see that as the tubes get weaker, then the signal that's generating the DC gets weaker, and the, the DC voltage, the, will, will, the AVC voltage will relax a bit. Of course, the thing finds its level, right? It, 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 it doesn't wander around, it just finds a level, as indicated by this meter. Now the instructions say, don't run the signal generator so high that you get a voltage over here. And just turn up the volume and listen to it come out of the speaker. But I'm, I'm against that because I don't like to listen to it. So we're going to try to work with the smallest voltage over here we can. Okay, this is 1.5 volt scale. This is the radio's receiving nothing but noise. So the noise is a signal. The noise gets detected, gets rectified, and produces a small voltage right here. But if I bring the signal in, 
that that meter will go right over. I'm pretty sure. Let's do that. Right over. So I can reduce the signal strength coming into the antenna. So I have trouble hearing it, but you can still see it. Now we're not generating much of a much of a voltage anymore. So there we are. 440, not 460. Well, that's quite a, that's, that's quite an error. That's quite an error. Now we're going to try to alter the tuning of these two transformers. Um, I need uh, a screwdriver to do it. Uh, just step over here. Grab these. So this is a special alignment tool. It's not quite the right kind. This is better. Let's see if I can fit this on. To here. There we are. So I'm ready to turn this, move the slug, reset the resonant frequency of the transformer, and, and get this thing aligned at the proper frequency. The difficulty with this radio is, th this is so far away, 440, and if I go up to where it's supposed to be, I can't hear it. It's just gone. If I can turn it up, I still can't hear it. So I'm going to get all the way up to 460. I'm going to have to slowly move, move my way up. Now another problem with using the antenna as an input is the signal is traveling through everything. Let me turn this down. Right. The idea is we don't have to listen to that. Signals traveling out of this tube, through this transformer, through this tube, through this transformer, and on, on out to here. So I'm going to try to adjust this one, but this one may be out of whack. So I have to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until until I get the proper max uh, set up. I could put the signal into the grid of this tube and then just focus on this this guy. But I'm going to try to cheat here. See if we can do this the easy way. Okay, so we got to watch this meter. I'm going to have to move things around here a little bit. I'm going to have to work around the camera a little bit here. Okay, so I, I can see the meter. It's a little overlit. Why so overlit? Well, we just have to, we'll have to go with it because this is so dark in here. My camera has turned itself. Maybe I can fix that by doing this. <laughs> Fool the camera. Okay, here we go. Let me turn the volume up a little bit so I can always hear it. Just barely up. Turn the signal strength down a bit. Okay. Turn the volume back up just a little. There we go. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna move the frequency in the direction I want to go until I can't hear this anymore. Turn it up. Turn it up. I'm really blasting a strong signal. Because I'm pretty sure these transformers are not tuned to a particular frequency. They're kind of all over the place. The signal's getting through all over the place. So let's see if we can clean it up now. We're at 455. That's a good place to get to. Here we go. Let's start with the first one. Very strong signal. To, to, that's why we can hear it. Okay. And the real action is on the meter there. We can hear it. First one to the top of the other can. Okay, knock back the signal strength. Where'd it go? Let it just totally disappear. Okay, we'll leave the signal strength blasting away. It's a little odd what just happened there. We'll tune this one up. Okay. Right there. And we'll 
tune up the last one. Get my hands right in front of the. Uh, a spark. Scare myself, man. Okay, just move that over. Move, move, move this over. I get a clear shot at that. Let's just check it. Okay, I got it. Power back on. I'm going to have to give the radio a moment, but not much. I said design the radio so it doesn't drift uh, with voltage changes. on the chassis when I'm doing this kind of stuff either. To steady the radio. Here we go. Well, that one didn't need any adjustment. Okay, let's see what's really happened here, because I'm not sure they're all tuned to 455. Is this now the loudest frequency? No. So, so something's way off. Something's way off. I think we're going to have to adopt, I think we're going to have to stop the antenna input type technique and really put it on the grid of this tube in order to get this done correctly or fiddle around more I fiddle around more let's do this because I, I, I just assume we achieve it here uh, let's tune down again okay tune up a little bit just a little bit see I went all the way up to 460 before so we're just a little bit up, 441. Come on. Oh, look at that difference. It's this guy here. conscious not to put my fingers into the back of the radio. Okay, then let's go up. Let's go up higher. Frequency. Okay, I want to do the other transformer here. We're just going to have to kind of like Climb the ladder step by step to get there. Oh my gosh, this is so annoying. There we go. Holy smokes. That made a whopper of a difference. I'm afraid these, uh, something else is going wrong. These, uh, I'm sliding these slugs in oh, to their limit almost. Okay, let's leave that one. Just doing this roughly now. Okay, we'll come back on this one. Okay, and this one. Step by step. Turn it by hand for crying out loud. Okay, we're at four. Made it all the way to four forty-four. Let's go up. That's all I can do. This slug is going to fall right into the radio at some point. Think of that. Something is going wrong here. Let's go 
vor. This is way, way, way out of adjustment. Way, way out. Go up higher. Okay, we're at 452 and I can still hear it. This one's not making any difference. Randomly adjusting the four four different slugs. Kind of We're almost up to 460 here. So, if you think of the coil and the slug in it. So pretend my fingernail is the slug here in the coil. Okay, so sitting here is not much different than sitting up here. And that could be what's happened, is I've really moved one of the slugs here when I really should be down here. There's also a potential for a slug collision in some of these radios. They can bring one slug down and the other one up. We can hit each other in some of these radios. So we just keep going, that's all we can do. And then once once I get there, 460, then we can wander around after that. It's right back in this thing all the way out. Just watch your hand. I just find this totally annoying. Okay, we're in. I'm gonna back this one way out. <sighs> Frustration's running high here. Gotta be careful. Can't let frustration take over. Okay, we're going down. Let's see if it comes back up. Right. Come back up. It's just getting quieter. No, I don't think it's ever gonna come back up. Crank it back down. Let me just show you what, what I'm doing exactly. That brass threaded shaft. I backed it all the way this way. Put it back down. Come on, tool. through it. I don't know. Let's carry on. So it's not just the coil that's causing this transformer to, to do its thing. There's a capacitor. Uh, could be inside. Could be down below. The capacitor could be a little out, causing the coil to have to be adjusted. You know, to compensate for the bad capacitor. Just guessing. Okay, uh, where are we here? Let's just... So we're at 450, really. And I'm just trying to get it to go up to 460.
Doesn't seem to want to go anywhere here. Four fifty-four. Can't even hear it. A very, very strong signal. I wonder if there's a uh, 460 trap in this radio. So a 460 trap is a circuit designed to kill 460 kilohertz on the antenna. So if I'm trying to shoot 460 kilohertz into the antenna and there's a trap circuit, it's weakening it. The closer I get to 460 on the uh, signal generator, <laughs> the less this whole thing's going to work. So we got to figure that out. Is there a, is there a trap circuit? A trap circuit? What's that? Oof! Some terrible sounding pops coming out of this radio stuff. Uh, if there's a trap circuit, yikes! That that that, that sounded really bad. Come on, radio. I don't know what's going on. Whew. I'm not touching anything, I'm just standing here. I did not like that sound one bit. So, um, yeah, I'm going to stop for a second and just study this and see if I can find a trap circuit in here. Okay, change of approach. Can't find any 460 circuit um, in the radio. Uh, probably isn't one. So uh, because the radio is starting out in poorly aligned, I've decided to take a more uh, potent approach. I'm now feeding the signal from the signal generator into this tube grid. From there, it goes through this transformer and out to the rest of the radio and out the speaker, does the ABC thing and all that. I don't have to deal with this one anymore. So first thing we want to do is vary the frequency on the signal generator and just see where this transformer is tuned to. So there's 460. It's way out. It's, way, it's like 4, 425. I'm just 16 miles out here. So let's start the process again just with that transformer right here. This one. So it could be my first attempt feeding this signal generator signal into the antenna was no good. Okay, I should keep an eye on the meter over here. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm normalizing the position of this slug. This is, this is kind of where it would normally be, kind of like this. Wow, I just killed the radio, didn't I? Of course, we're on 430 here. Frequency. Um, what happened? Okay, so the radio is basically nothing's getting through now. If you misalign these things enough, nothing can get past them. This is a. I, I thought this would be a, a five-minute procedure. Okay, maybe I thought ten minutes. Okay, we'll screw that back down. Where's the other? The other one, that's this can we're working on. Again, I'm moving it more towards its normal position. What I would guess is the normal position. Nothing happening here. I can't turn it. It's just going dead. Okay, so we'll head for it. Wow. Wow, this is just an annoying tool. Heck with this thing. Give me a screwdriver. Yeah, my frustration level is definitely going high here. So supposedly you shouldn't metal, use metal tools on these kinds of adjustments. That's not particularly true in the case of these. Ah. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to have to stop soon because 
You know, I'm thinking about I should be outside. That's what's happening here. So I've got the signal generator set to 460 and we can hear it. Perfect. Now I should be able to get this transformer to max out this one. Let's see. Oh, fantastic. So this slug is now moving into the normal range and the signal's coming up. Excellent. That's excellent. Now we'll do the top. Yeah, we don't need to listen to it. That's the whole reason I'm not using the speaker. Okay. Looks like that's the maximum there. Just, just this one again. This is critical for the operation of the radio on all bands. Because no matter what antenna frequency you're trying to tune, when the signal gets to here, it's 460 kilohertz. Doesn't matter your short wave or whatever. So any adjustments done in this in the later stages of the radio affect the entire the entirety of the radio. So I think I got this one tuned to 460 now. You can double check just by swinging the frequency back and forth a little bit. Watch the meter. Set, make the meter go as high as, as we can get it. I would say right around there. As high as you can get. And you can see the number 460. Fantastic. Now what we do, knowing this one's good, I will now feed the signal in to this tube to go through this transformer. We'll leave this one alone because it's correct. And we'll just adjust this one to 460. Okay, so I gotta do that with the radio switched off because I'm too chicken. Rightfully so. Unless I'm using another capacitor to protect the signal generator. Uh, but we're putting it on grids, so so I want to go on the grid of this tube up here. That's a 6SA7. 6SA7. The grid I'm after is on pin 3, is it? No, 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 no. It's on pin. So it's G3. G3. Oh, there it is. Pin 8. So pin 8 is grid number 3. Pin 8. Grid number three, pin eight on this tube, pin eight, eight is right up at the top. It's got one, of the, it's got this, uh, the doohickey. It's got the, uh, just making sure I'm on pin eight. Is that really pin eight? Let's check on the diagram too. I don't want to get this wrong. Okay, pin eight. Pin 8. Yep, that would be pin 8. Okay, so we're going to put this on pin 8. Pin 8, we're good. Power on again. We should hear this uh, 460 tone. Well, if we do, we're in luck. Here it comes. Fantastic. 
turn down the level. Not too low. Start adjusting it as soon as I can find my alignment tool. Make sure I do the right can now. I don't want to do the wrong one. Okay, start on the bottom here. Yeah, five five minutes. How many things in life have I thought were gonna take five minutes? There we go. Meter go up. Excellent. I'm moving the slug more into the normal position again. Look at that. Wow. 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 That's exactly what would happen if we were listening to a radio station. I'll turn this down. Okay, so now the signal coming in to the radio, even though I'm injecting it here, is similar to the signals coming from the antenna, even though there's no antenna connected. That's why you can hear the bup, 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 bup. That's perfect. Okay, right can, don't make a mistake. And we're watching the meter, down. Oh my gosh. It's hard to say, but I think I'm just discovering piles of sensitivity here in this radio. It's hard to say offhand. Okay, top. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, laying down. Uh, we're not, this is a 1.5 volt scale. There's still quite a low AVC voltage there. The signal now we're sending is around 100 microvolts down from, it's one, we, we, it, it's one tenth what it was when we started just this bit here, one tenth. Fantastic making the radio 10 times more sensitive just on this one adjustment. I'll bet you the radio is a thousand times more more sensitive. Oh, it's still going. Oh my gosh. Wow, where's it going to end? There. <sighs> the uh, slug almost disappeared into the top of the can there. Both of them, quite low now, but similar. Okay, do the bottom, bottom of the correct can, because you have to go back and forth on these things. Go in there. Okay, watching the meter again. Up and down, so there's a nice peak there. Now we can start filling with this can again because we know we've got the right signal coming through. So we'll touch it up. Nothing to touch up. We'll check the top of this one here. Better known as the second IF. There we go. Nothing to get out of that. The top of this one. Almost fallen in. Can't turn this one too much further. There we go. Okay, backed it out a little bit. Okay, bottom of this one. Yeah, it'll be interesting to uh, play this radio once this is done. Because I think in a, in a huge amount of sensitivity has come. This also affects the tone quality of the radio. You can sharpen these things up to the point where you begin to lose the treble in the stations you're listening to. So occasionally when you're all done you have to go back and turn these just to make the radio tone quality really good. Okay, here we go. Down. the spot. I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay, volume down. This off. This off. Okay. 
Okay, volume up. It's quite, quite, quite a rumble in there. You can't hear it, but boy, that, my whole bench is shaking. Very deep rumble in there. Let's tune the radio a little bit. Now the rumble disappeared. So, oh, so that's an audio signal coming through from noise. ABC, 15 volts, full scale. And we're gonna go, we need an antenna. We need, I need to stop. We'll flip on an antenna, we'll find out what's happening. Okay, last time I checked, we could hardly pick up anything on AM radio. So I'm just gonna clip this on the antenna. Put the ground on, see what happens. Leave it off for now. Now we're actually tuned for stations at this point. Like, hey, this is in my house. It, it's hard to get good uh, reception, even with this external antenna connected. Okay, if we just turn a little this way, we keep our eye on the ABC meter too down here. station at 860. Right in here. Here we go. We have the horrible antenna problem. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this horrible, the, the, the long wire type antenna is just not really, hey, you know what, I didn't put the ground on. Let's do, let's just do that. Put the antenna back on, turn the volume up. Sometimes this really improves things. Five ninety, it's right on five ninety. another antenna it may not be picking up this, this terrible noise so I'm gonna run and flip the antenna and then run back see what happens Here's the antenna we're going to try. This is a loop antenna. Uh, you can look on the internet and find all kinds of information about these kinds of antennas. Uh, so the thing about it is it's a tunable antenna. It has to be tuned in fact. The tuning is done with a capacitor down here. And it's been a while since I've used this antenna. What is this? What is that? So 
So we'll see how it goes. Now the way this one connects, you can't connect one wire on this. You need to connect both wires. So I'm going to take off the uh, no antenna and listen to it. Now the thing about these antennas, the loop antennas, they're very low impedance. So I would expect when I hook this up, that radio is going to go quiet. Here we go. Quieter. Now we are, we are tuned to a station there. So now it's a matter of tuning the antenna to the station. So there's no, I just have to do it. I have to wing it. Plus the, these antennas are very directional. So it depends which way it's turned. I think, I think this is the right way. Let's go. So I've turned the antenna in such a way that it can't pick up that noise. Where's the station? I think I tuned the radio a bit, didn't I? Let's tune it some more over here. Here we are. Turn it up a little bit. Simplement par le fait d'être mythique. Et à la seconde même où elle était née, elle est devenue une célébrité. Pourquoi Le premier enfant à être né de la fécondation qui est une vitro. Est-ce qu'on dit que c'est le premier qui s'est trouvé Ben, à l'époque, c'est l'expression qu'on utilisait. C'est une expression qui est tombée en désuétude depuis, qui est un peu maîtrisante aussi et qui. This is giving us our best impression of how well this radio is working now. Thumbs up on that. That's working good. I, I've done enough radios, I've used this antenna enough times to know what good and bad is. This is good. So we've succeeded at boosting the IF tremendously, I think. Uh, and now with it tuned to the correct frequency, the rest of the alignment can be undertaken. Um, and that's for tomorrow because, oh my gosh, it's after 11 o'clock this morning, uh, what am I doing in here? My cats must be wondering, where is he? He's usually outside by now. Now, uh, earlier on I mentioned that uh, Sir uh, Reese had said what a hopeless case for human beings. We don't have the brain power to think our way through some of the problems that scientists and, and others are trying to think their way through. And this could be true of politics, it could be true of just about everything. We are limited by the capabilities of our brain. The good news is he thinks artificial intelligence is the key to moving human intelligence forward. Now with artificial intelligence uh, it, it, these systems can recognize patterns and other things that we can't pick up on. They can become aware of things that we can never be aware of and also operate at such a super high speed and do mathematics that would take decades for people to do even with current computers so that's where our hope lies our hope lies with using artificial intelligence to move humanity forward into an area it can't get to on its own hey that's pretty good so that's a happy that's a happy way to end i think today there's hope there's hope Hope for humanity. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, carry on tomorrow with the next stage of the alignment process. Fantastic. See ya.